are you suddenly working from home? Yeah, a lot of people are, and you know it's going to be a stressful time. Well, if that's you, this video is for you. My name is Matt Hug with Nonprofit.Courses, and I thought it might be helpful for me to give you some practical tips on working from home, especially for folks who may not have done it for a while, or maybe just do it episodically, but are now, at least in the next few weeks, going to make this their gig. So let's get started. First thing I got to tell you is this is going to be stressful. Yeah, because you know not only the crisis at hand that prompted you to work from home, but then also, you know, there's the new environment. All your colleagues are dispersed. You know, you're, you're going to be learning new systems. There's going to be demands on the home front. So I'm going to say this a lot in this video. It's really important. Forgive yourself. That's okay. We're all going through it. Everybody's going to get by. So it's important to just take a step back and a forgiving attitude toward yourself and for everybody else around you because things are going to happen people are going to react differently and you know it's all going to come out in the other end of this after it's done but you just got to forgive yourself now there are some upsides to uh, working from home i mean think of all the time that you're going to save commuting I mean, that's great. The gas, the stress on your vehicle if you drive, the stress on transit if you don't. You know, there's just going to be a lot of um, time saved and maybe some money saved uh, for uh, you as well if you're now working from home. Plus, there are studies that show that people who work from home can be much more productive than at work which is great because that might actually find you some time that you didn't normally have uh, working you know, at your office because of all those little distractions and people bothering you one way or another. And then, of course, you're going to have the ability to reconnect a bit with family and friends. That's good news, bad news on that. There's a bit of a fine line. We're going to talk about that uh, further on. But, you know, there can be some upsides here, so just keep that in mind. Now, the important first thing I'll bring up here is dressing the part. It is amazing what dressing in a work kind of clothing will do for you when you work at home. Now it doesn't mean you have to have a suit and tie on or you know the the skirt or whatever right but dress kind of in a business casual kind of way uh, and particularly no PJs, no slippers, no bathrobe. I will tell you that that sends a signal to you, your body, that says, hey, this really isn't work. Well, you know, it's a nice mythology to think that people who work from home work in their slippers and PJs, right? But it really is not the uh, best practices, we'll say, because it impacts the kind of work you do. Plus, you know, if you're going to be on a video call, do you want your boss to see you in, in PJs? No. You want to look like, you know, you're ready for work. And that reminds me of a uh, old Jetsons uh, episode where Jane Jetson got a phone call on the video phone and she had to put on a mask uh, to talk to her friend. You know, it's just people foresaw this happening and it really does make a difference. Keep a schedule. That's really important to keep the schedule that you might have at work at home. If you took breaks a certain time, if you took lunch at a certain time, if you did, uh, you know, you arrived at the office at a particular time, you left at the office at another kind of time, right? That's important if you can do it to keep that same kind of schedule to keep up that rhythm. And especially if other people do the same, you know, now you are able to facilitate communication between each other. And, you know, I mean, nothing says you can't, like at lunchtime, you, if you go into your lunchroom, right, at, at work, well, maybe now it's going to be your kitchen at home, but you can set up a little um, video chat on, uh, you know, on Google Hangouts or something with the people that you typically have lunch with and have lunch with them, too, just from different places. So being able to keep that schedule, being able to keep those connections are really important. Now, it might be that, and it's a reality check here, right, that family may influence this because they're at home too. You know, your spouse, your partner, your kids, whatever, you know, they're going to be in the same environment you are. So 
And with that, maybe you keep a timer and say, you know, work time, and then you do something with them, and then it, so, so that you keep the same number of hours that you typically work, um, and maybe displace those a little bit around your day. Select a place. This is pretty important to do because, you know, do you already have a home office? You're way ahead of the game. But maybe you have a spare room that you can get a desk in or a card table or something and set that up as your office, uh, your dining room, your kitchen table, right? Don't go for the comfy chair. <laughs> I will tell you, that can be deadly. Uh, that can suddenly turn into a nap really quickly. Um, you know, this fellow up here who's sitting there on the couch doing work, looking really relaxed, suddenly kind of slopes down and down and down. And suddenly, <clears throat> you know, they're asleep. It's important to keep yourself a little bit discomforted, right? Because it actually adds to your productivity. Sitting up straight, you know, getting at a desk and a chair that work for you, that's really important if it's at all possible. Now, for anybody, another old television reference, it catches on YouTube, I'm sure, WKRP in Cincinnati, maybe you've seen it in reruns, where this character, Les Nesman, actually taped an office for himself. It was an open office environment like as was really popular back in the 1970s. He didn't like that. And so he made an office space. He set up some boundaries. I know it seems kind of absurd, but you know what? It worked for him and it works for a lot of people to be able to set up those kind of boundaries so that now um, people know that you're in your office. And he even had people come up and knock on the door uh, to, to be let into the office. And, uh, you know, it might be kind of fun to try that, especially if you have uh, people around you who, uh, you know, you need to keep a little bit of boundary on. And that brings me to keeping organized. That's huge. Keeping organized can reduce your stress and can save time. You don't want to end up like this uh, picture here with things all over the place. And that's easy to happen at home because it suddenly feels like you're more relaxed and you can do things a little bit differently. No, if you're organized at work, keep it organized at home. Um, if you're not organized at work, eh, maybe you can now become organized at home and bring that habit back. But the, the point is though, that being able to keep that level of organization is really important because you want to be productive just like you were at work. Don't let those standards relax. And that brings me to, you know, rely on technology. This is what makes a lot of working from home possible is your ability to, you know, exchange documents remotely, to be able to talk to people, you know, remotely. I would suggest that everybody agree on some sort of video conferencing service, whether that's Zoom or freeconferencecall.com or Skype or Google Hangouts is another one on the list here, right? And, and be able to communicate regularly. Pick a messaging app that you're all going to use. Facebook, WhatsApp, you know, your cell phone text messaging, whatever it is, to be able to, in effect, walk into somebody's office and knock on the door and say, hey, Fred, you know, I got this problem. Can we talk for a minute, right? And then flip maybe to video or telephone or something. But the idea is to uh, take uh, those little things, those little messages that you might actually use, you know, as a, a conversation uh, when you walk into somebody's office, you can reduce it down to the text and that'll be really helpful. And of course, coordinate with your office's technology infrastructure, if at all possible. Uh, if, if you have some broader database that you're able to tap into or whatever, that you definitely need to do that. You may not be able to do that right away. It's going to take a little time to get everybody up to speed on that, but that's going to be a major help too. Yeah, and now, of course, what works against, you know, technology is one thing. The antithesis sometimes is just exercising, getting up and moving your body. This is huge to keep a good life working at home. So stand up and stretch, you know, even something as easy as that. Walk around, use the stairs. If you have stairs where you are at home, walk up and down the stairs a couple times, just to get that blood going, get that old clothing off the exercise bike. You know, it's no longer a hanger anymore. Take a, a little bit of a ride in the morning or the afternoon or during a break or something just to keep that going. I got a dog, take a walk, right? 
whatever it is you need to do to get your body moving in key times during the day so you're just not sitting at your desk because that's really easy to happen when you are working from home. And watch out particularly for the dangerous distractions. You know, TV and uh, TV particularly, but also radio can be a real problem for people working at home. If you're used to music playing in the background, that's great. Set it up, make it happen. You know, if you need some head thumping music to get through a project, cool, make, you know, do it, right? But keep, keep in mind, however, you have neighbors um, and your neighbors may not appreciate that. So headphones could be really important here. And uh, also, uh, you know, I, I joke with people, the best reason to have a daytime job is daytime TV, because boy, that just is, you don't want to get sucked into that, right? So keep those distractions away. Watch the amount of news you take in. You know, make sure that you do whatever you do at work. It's easy just to click on a radio and, and hear whatever the local news is or the national news. You might want to just regulate that a bit just to keep your stress levels down, especially in a home environment where you're not physically around a lot of people. I know that can really affect some folks. Your kitchen can be deadly. Your kitchen can be, you know, uh, a magnet. And believe me, some people are going to come back to work when this is all over and be five or 10 pounds heavier because they couldn't stay out of the kitchen. Just don't let that be you. Regulate your time in the kitchen, just like you might not be in the kitchen at work at all the time. You know, chores and home projects. I know, you know, that pile of laundry is there. Oh, it'd be easy just to run down, throw it in the wash and then do some project. No. If you do your wash on when you go to the office after hours, then that's when you're going to do your wash and you're working at home after hours. Don't let those things creep into your day. That's going to be really deadly for you. And of course, family and friends, explain and talk about boundaries. It's going to be really hard, I know, but that's a really important thing to do if you're going to work at home and be reasonably productive. Let's dig in a little more here because there's going to be some stress with this. People aren't used to seeing each other, and I find that fascinating because in the span of like three or four generations, uh, humans uh, in the Western world have moved from this um, economy where folks were at home, artisans, farmers, other people were, were at home and at work was home, uh, to now separating work and home in the industrial economy. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons for that, but now maybe we're getting back to our roots where work is home, but that means that we have to figure this whole thing out again. So talking with people who are around you, your children, your, your spouse, partners, you know, roommates, whoever it is, who probably are thrust into the same situation as you are, you know, you're all going to have to work this out together might mean, you know, that you're, you're going to become the homeschool uh, person if you have kids. And that might mean putting them uh, like at a desk with you and they do their schoolwork while you're doing your office work. Or it might be relying a little more on the TV as a babysitter. I heard somebody on the radio talk about that recently. Um, uh, but there's going to be a lot of negotiation around these points. It might really stress your schedule. Um, you know, if you can find, we talked about an office, if you can find an, a room with a door to be able to go into uh, to make calls, just like you maybe move into a conference room to make calls at work, uh, that can be important. But working around this and making it a joint effort that everybody knows, particularly in your family, the people you, you will see now every day at home, that you're in it together and you have to kind of negotiate these things. Believe me, I know kids aren't great at that, but, uh, you know, you're going to get through it. They will too. Stay balanced, right? Build a new routine. Treat yourself with some forgiveness. Well, there's that word again, right? Remember, your colleagues are struggling too. Everybody's going through this if you are. And your ability to you know, carry on your good mission and work at home can be really critical to your nonprofit or if you're in business as a consultant or whatever to be able to carry on your work that way. Uh, you know, keep lines of communication open. This, I think, is probably one of the most important takeaways here is to connect frequently with your colleagues, your clients, you know, volunteers and boards to, to talk about 
not only the tasks that you have to do, but kind of commiserate a little bit about uh, the difficulties they're having and help, e help each other out. One of the things you might find is that you're going to have some really good ideas that you're going to be able to take away back to work after it's done, or maybe even set up a, a little micro environment at your home that you'll be able to come back to and be more productive on later on. So there can be some really good upsides to this, really. <laughs> And, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you to go check out nonprofit.courses. This could be a great time to do some things that are extra to make yourself more productive, you know, in those interstitial times, either on breaks or uh, the time now you're saving for commute to and from or over lunch. Go to the www.nonprofit.courses, not .org or .com, just .courses. Check out the videos there. There's almost a thousand of them. Well over 750 are free, and the premium ones are really good too and great value. Go check out the uh, you know you just click through. There's no membership. Uh, there will be less than five minutes to over five hours, and there's sure to be a video there that you're going to find some value in. And go recommend it to your board, your volunteers, to your fellow colleagues and staff. All right, this is Matt Hub with Nonprofit.Courses. You're going to get through this. We're all going to get through this, and you can make it a great nonprofit day.